second Friday Art Walk. I'm Paula Goodbar, your Art Walk Coordinator. And tonight we have a very special evening with two lovely beauty queens. We have Harley Emery representing Miss Lane County. And we have Jen Albertson representing Miss U of O. Well, she is Miss U of O, representing the U of O. So um, I hope you join me on this wonderful walk. It's beautiful weather. Thank you for not being out at OCF this evening and supporting the arts in downtown Springfield. I'm going to call up our artist, who is a very, I want to call her a dear friend. I just love Marilyn Stauber. And she is a member over at Emerald Art Center and a fantastic artist. So I'm very happy to see her art here in the City Hall Gallery. So I'm going to hand the mic to our girls and they're going to be talking with Marilyn. Thank you for coming. All right, so we're just going to ask you a few questions about your art, yeah. and I'd like to start off by asking what your biggest inspiration is. It looks like you um, paint a lot of different subjects. I so do. I do. You I'm know, inspired. What inspires you? Uh, it can be anything. You know, you, you're taking a walk, and there's something that's just beautiful to look at, to look at or you have a, a relative that says, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. So the, the portraitures that are here, are those mostly relatives or are They're those all family? All family. Okay. Yes, I have such a big family that uh, I'll never get, never get all done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I was wondering, do you paint from pictures or do you paint from still lifes that you set up or just from your imagination? Mostly I photograph things and then I look through my photographs and I'm like, oh wow, there's something in here. I, I'd like to do it. Okay. Thank you. And then I was curious, um, what do you love about watercolor and pastel? I noticed, I think they were all watercolor and pastel. Well, they're or not mostly? all. This is an oil here, and there's a self-portrait down there that's also oil. Do you have a preference, or? Well, oil's a mess to clean up. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you have to clean up those paint brushes mm -hmm. <laughs> soon. Uh, but. One thing I like about the watercolor and the MV pastel, it's very immediate. You can open your watercolor box and, and, and you know, cover a lot of territory. Mm -hmm. You can refine it with the pastels. Yeah. It, they're good companions. Yes. <laughs> All right, and does anybody in the audience have questions? How long have you been painting? <laughs> Always. Oh. <laughs> I can remember in the first grade getting to take a picture to show the principal. Oh. <laughs> I can, oh, I'm an artist. <laughs> oh, there's one. Um, did you, as a kid, did you ever have favorite arts like Van Gogh, Monet? You know, I didn't know much about art books when I was a kid. So, no, I never met those people until college. And I was in college in my 30s. Oh, well, I might have known a little about it. <laughs> pretty, pretty ignorant. Any other questions? Yes. Does the watercolor come first and then the pastels? Yes. Uh, especially in the rhododendron there, right here. <clears throat> Quite a bit of the uh, watercolor is, 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 is fresh here. <coughs> And then I just augmented with the pencil. They're the messiest. All right, any other questions? I just got here, so it might have been asked before. Do you paint from, um, from life or photograph photographs or sketches or some combination? Uh, I, I have painted from life a lot, but uh, these are all done from. Uh, photographs that I took. Like, like do you, digital, do you put them on a laptop or do you print them and sort of paste them everywhere? And uh, use them? I do make prints of them and I use them for my, my guide. And before we get started on the walk, is there anything you would like to tell us about your art? Other than thank you so much for coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. We all really enjoy this stuff. It's beautiful. <laughs>
tour you got to show and you get the whole month away. Yeah, it is okay. Have you featured you before? No, this is my first feature. You only get featured like once a year. I have a here and there. My name is Claire Fian, and I uh, work with philanthropy for the Oregon Country Fair. So if you want to know how philanthropic the fair is or how they do that, I'm happy to talk with you about that. In my daily life, I narrate audiobooks. But I am tonight's hostess because of my philanthropy work with the Oregon Country Fair, so we thank them for sponsoring this evening. And I thank you all for coming out because you actually have braved the elements to come out here this evening. Uh, you may not, we all think of the cold as being worse than the heat, but we actually lose more humans on the planet because of heat than we do cold. So, thanks for being here, and, and there's plenty of cold water, so keep yourselves hydrated. Um, the dates for this year's fair are July 10th, 11th, and 12th. For more information, please visit OregonCountryFair.org. Um, we have a lot on the agenda this evening, but I'm going to introduce you to Steve LaRiccia, who is the gallery coordinator here at the New Zone Gallery. <laughs> I want to thank Jessica Watson and the Land Arts Council and Claire for bringing all of your wonderful people out on this nice, warm evening. Surprised me how many people are here, because when I drove in from the co from uh, the Oregon, I live by the Oregon Fair, when I drove in, there was just a line of people, it reminded me of the fair was going on, but there's people just getting out of town. So I'm glad that all of you do not get out of town and you're here tonight. So I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I'm going to keep this short so we can get on with what we need to get on with. First of all, I want to say that our June, say, uh, our, the gallery, things are just picking up here. Last month, June, was a record month for us. This is going to be a record year for us. So I want to thank everybody for supporting the New Zone, supporting the arts community here. So I want to give, you, give everybody yourself a big hand for supporting the arts and uh, the arts community in Eugene. A couple of things that are coming up. Um, we have a new website, newzonegallery.org. 
Uh, it <clears throat> replaces the old funky set we had for a number of years. It's very fresh, very interactive. So if you have a chance, please check that out, www.newzonegallery.org. And there'll be uh, uh, submission forms for the, uh, for the open shows that we do, a virtual tour of the gallery, uh, even donate through PayPal, excuse me. So please check that out. A couple of events that are coming up. Uh, we just found out, I got a thing in the mail today, we talked to some of the board members right away. On Sunday, the July 26th, apparently they're going to close off, not close it off, but open up uh, Broadway, West Broadway, all the way down to Monroe Park, to no cars, just people. And I just found this out today, the city's put it on, so there'll be no cars uh, parking, no cars traffic, and they're, they're inviting businesses and residents to do something on that day. So we are gonna plan something to be outside the gallery, either have a barbecue, have some demonstrations, it's all up in the works as we're talking right now about it. So that's July 26th, uh, that's a Sunday. Thanks, so, Okay. Also, on July 31st, uh, and we have flyers for this up front, we are having the PBR, Paps Blue Ribbon, Beer Label, <coughs> Beer Art Competition. <coughs> and they should have some of the finalists for their nationwide competition for their Beer Label Art. That's going to be July 31st, that is on a Saturday, starts at 5 o'clock, we'll have music, PRB Beer, and uh, a DJ. Great. Also, uh, tentatively, uh, we are going to start our live drawing sessions. That's still in the work. We used to do that here some years ago. Uh, so we're going to try to bring that back. Tentatively, it should start on Wednesday, August 12th. Uh, check our website check or the, the newsletter. Website. Check the website. Check That'll the be the website. thing we do. Thank you, Steve. We have to move right along. Well, I'm sorry about things starting up. And so, we're going to move right along. Also, I want to thank yeah. everyone for coming out, and that's what I'm going to say about that. I'd like to introduce you to Andrea, our featured artist, and I guess you're going to go inside and meet um, Dimitra for the spotlight artist. So again, thank you for coming out. Thanks, sorry Steve. to rush you guys, but stick around as long as you like. I do have a few more housekeeping tips. So, if you do not already have your guide for this evening, they are available near the front door. Basically, we're on Broadway tonight, so it'll be fairly easy to catch up with us. We're just moving from West Broadway to East Broadway this evening. Okay. Yes. At each venue, I will thank our sponsor, introduce the artist or artists, and give you a bit of time to look around before we leave to go to the next gallery. But we are in a schedule of about a half an hour from each to each gallery. Um, I, I hope you brought lots of change and one dollar bills in your pockets so that you can feel free to tip the artists as well as musicians. We have Gumbo Groove in this room this evening and Bellafina Ensemble in the gallery we'll move to in a few minutes. Thank you for your patience. And I do want to introduce you to Andrea Ross. So tell us a little bit about your art. So tell us about the process of felting. Of felting. Hi everybody, I'm Andrea Ross. My project is the Pop-Ups Carousel. Um, Eat the microphone. Eden. So, um, my process is usually beginning with wet felting, so I make the ground, and then I needle felt the details, which is like painting with a barbed needle and with fiber. Great. And who, what, what artists inspire you? Uh, I grew up in Manhattan, and it was on uh, Park Avenue and 83rd Street, so I used to hang out at the Metropolitan Museum a lot. And they had the unicorn tapestries. Um, I was also very much inspired by the Bayou tapestries. Those are my two major sources of inspiration. And how is it that you are now in Oregon? Oh, my lover. Lovely. That's a good story. So I want to invite you to come and speak to Andrea and, uh, this evening, as well as looking at a video of her work, which is available at the Register Guard site. So please, you can see more about her art there. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, I'd just like to thank the New Zone Gallery for making it possible to show our work here. I really appreciate that opportunity. And her, um, she is being modest, but I will let you know that her art is collected internationally. So thank you so much. And let's move next door.
Maori people struggled to retain their traditional land rights. Na'iwi'e, our song, next song, has become an anthem for, um, of support for that movement. The words encourage the islanders to be united as one, like the Pacific Ocean, to hold firmly to their inheritance and to compassion. The song calls to young women to rise up and be strong, and tells the lads to stand tall and look like men. Not EVA.
called Espiritu de Dios. It's a hymn asking God to fill my life, my soul, my being.
withers, he wrote Lean on Me. His childhood in the coal mining town of Slab Fork, West Virginia, was the inspiration for his hit song. In 1972, he was living in Los Angeles and found himself missing the strong sense of community found in his hometown. The arrangement we sing introduces the song of the civil rights anthem, We Shall Overcome, creating a ballad of inspiration, hope, and courage.
Uh, Jeannie will be up front with another flag. Yeah. 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 What I'll do is in a few minutes, Jeannie will be up front. Well, help me too! <laughs> Thank you. 